it's hard for me to do like a ton of book videos just because when I read, I can only like read so like enough books to fill up a video. So I figured I'd start kind of diving into my favorite books out of different genres. So um, I specifically want to do fantasy fiction because that's one of like my top favorite categories to read. Um, and that's been consistent throughout my whole life. I've always been into fantasy fiction. Um, disclaimer, these are the favorite books of books that I currently own. So that's kind of how I, I always do things because I only own so many books. So, um, anyways, let's get into it because I actually have quite a few and it was kind of hard to pick, uh, which ones are my favorites. So, um, the first book, and this is, I will say, one of my favorite books of all time in general, but this is definitely my favorite fantasy book of all time. But I would say top three favorite books of all time, probably. If not my most favorite book ever. So this is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. Now, Aaron Morgenstern has only written two books. And they're both amazing, and I have them both with me. So The Night Circus is about a mysterious circus that, um, and I believe it takes place in the 1800s, I think, um, in like the London area. Uh, but anyways, the circus magically appears in different places and, um, you never know when it's going to come. You never know when it's going to leave. And it's like, this supposed to be this amazing magical circus. Um, it's written so beautifully. The way Aaron Morgenstern writes things is just unreal. Um, so it has a ton of magic in it, very uh, descriptive elements, and a ton of fantasy. So it's very fun. Um, it, like I said, it's one of my, it is probably my favorite book of all time. such a good writer. I've actually, I rarely read books more than once because I don't have time. Um, I read this book twice and what was crazy is that when I finished it the first time, I immediately wanted to start or just reread it because it was so incredible. And I think I have like, there was something, I had a dog-eared page some. this quote, and I'm going to read it because it's not going to spoil anything. It said, someone needs to tell those tales when, when the battles are fought and won and lost, when the pirates find their treasures and the dragons eat their foes for breakfast with a nice cup of lapsang suchong. Someone needs to tell their bits of overlapping narrative. There's magic in that. It's in the listener, and for each and every ear, it will be different, and it will affect them in ways they can never predict. From the mundane to the profound, you may tell a tale that takes up residence in someone's soul, becomes their blood and self and purpose. That tale will move them and drive them, and who knows what they might do because of it, because of your words. That is your role, your gift. I just thought that was so beautiful. Just... You may tell a tale that takes up residence in someone's soul, becomes their blood and self and purpose. And you know, I've always been a big reader and I used to write a lot. And um, I do hope to, to I'm gonna put this out there and it's kind of a lofty goal, but I've always wanted to write a book. Um, so I hope to write a book someday. But I think it's a really beautiful notion that the way you write a story or tell a story, just the substance, the way you word it, anything could, you know, impact somebody's life. And I just think that's incredible. So, anyways. Okay, I'm going to show you the other Aaron Morgenstern book. Um, because, you know, why not? So, this is the other one she's written, and this is, it came out maybe two years ago. This is called The Starless Sea, and this was also... 
also very good. And as you know, I love keys, so I was already very excited about the cover. Um, so this is another uh, fantasy fiction, and she does write uh, fantasy for adults. Um, and it, not because there's anything like adult content, but just the way it's written, it's not necessarily like, I don't want to say it's, it's an easy read. It's just that, um, I don't know, I can't imagine like a, like a high schooler necessarily, or like a middle schooler, like being able to like grasp it. There's some, um, I think complexity to the way that she writes, but that's just my personal opinion. And I believe that she lists her books as adult fiction fantasy. So anyways, um, but this one is about like a hidden world and, um, this guy who is like determined to like find it. It's like a hidden world, of course, within our world. And it's, you're kind of following like his chase to like find this, um, place that he's like convinced is, is real. Um, so it's, it's very mysterious and it's very, um, it's almost thrillery, but like in a fantasy kind of way. Um, but the descriptions of this other world are so interesting, and I've never read anything like it. Like I find a lot of uh, fantasy books to have a lot of the same elements and um, like character types, and you know, like when it comes to like fairies or fae or things like that, like they all kind of are similar. But the thing I like about Erin Morgenstern is that the worlds that she creates are so unique. So, um, very good. Highly recommend both of her books. If you've read them, let me know too, because I'd love to nerd out about that. Okay, next is, um, The House in the Cerulean Sea by DJ Clune. Um, this book is like a warm hug. It felt very much to me like Umbrella Academy, uh, if, if you're familiar with that Netflix show. But basically, it's about a man who works at this agency. It's kind of like a like CPS, kind of. Um, but it's a world where there's magical children. And um, these kids, this group of kids, is their powers are like so like either unruly or um, dangerous or something that they put them in this home together. And it's pretty like isolated from everybody else to keep everyone safe. Um, but there are kids with, like, it also reminds me very much of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Um, it kind of has that, that vibe to it. Um, but anyways, uh, the guy ends up going to the house to, like, evaluate it, basically, and ends up just, like, getting to know the kids, and it's just really good. It's, like, uh, kind of, like, creepy in a fun way. He's a very talented writer. Uh, I recently read another book, uh, Under the Whispering Door, which was kind of like about like an in-between place between like uh, after you die before you like kind of move on, and that was really interesting. He's got a really unique, um, what's the word I'm looking for? He comes up with really unique ideas for fantasy fiction, and I appreciate that because like I said, like a lot of the fantasy fiction books kind of blend together. There's not a lot of standout stuff. So it's nice when you have unique characters and stories and settings. So. Okay, next is the classic A Court of Thorn and Roses. Thorns and Roses. Um, this is a series by Sarah J. Moss, if you're not familiar. I feel like if you're into fantasy fiction at all, you're familiar at least with her. <laughs> But this is an amazing series, and I would say it's young adult fantasy, but it also has like a lot of uh, spicy content, so. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to dive too deep on this. I've talked about this book multiple times, um, or this series. It's a very good series, though. Um, the romance between the two leads is so good. And I think it's unique in the fact that, like, well, I can't spoil anything, but I, I think it has unique elements. Um, but it's basically in the world of the Fae, um, and humans are kind of like the minority in the situation, and, um, the Fae kind of like rule everything and are a danger to humans, um, and the main lead is a human, um, but yeah, it's very good. There's a lot of, like, war and politics and lots of magic, lots of fun fantasy fiction, so highly recommend. 
course, have another book by Sarah J. Moss because she kind of is the fantasy queen. Um, this one, which is an ongoing series, and the second one just came out, and it's take it, this one. It's pretty chunky, so I guess it takes her a while to write these books. But um, this is the Crescent City series. This is the first book. This is the House of Earth and Blood. And um, what's unique about this one is, although it is um, fantasy, it's set in a world where it seems like it's far into the future. So there are humans, there are werewolves, there are witches, there are demons, there are fairies, everything. But like they also have like technology and like it's more, it reminds me very much of like the how they handle Lore Olympus, where they're like, they have phones, and like, there's like, they talk like, not <laughs> old-timey. Um, I don't know, it's good. Uh, this is definitely adult content. Um, but it's good, and the second book, like, it's a lot of mystery in this one. So if you like mystery, and you like fantasy fiction, highly recommend picking up this series. Um, it's not complete, which is kind of a bummer. Um, and like I said, the second book just came out, and the second book was very good. At first, I was reading it, and I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm really that into it. And then, oh my god, the ending was unreal. So, um, but yeah, Sarah J. Moss is just, if you're new to fantasy fiction too, I highly recommend just picking up anything by her. Any of her series are good. Um, I still haven't read the Throne of Glass series. I'm just in a position right now where I don't want to start a new series that's like eight books long or something. I will, I will get around to it probably before the next Crescent City, uh, one comes out, but, um, you guys, I have so many books is sitting in my room of books I still have yet to read, and I feel like I read pretty fast and read a lot, but it's like a never-ending growing pile. So, but anyways, super, super good. and then I accidentally grow a pile way too high and then I risk it toppling over so um, next up is this what I would consider to be an epic fantasy but it is just one book um, it's just a big ass book this is The Priory of the Orange Tree by uh, Samantha Shannon this book is so good um, this book takes place in a fictional world there's some magic, um, there's a lot of politics and different kingdoms, like, spread out across this world, and, um, it's, it's interesting, um, a very good writer, uh, very good at setting, like, a, what would I say, um, like, world building, um, which I, I very much appreciate, but it's super good, if you like epic fantasies. This one's super good. I would actually read this again, even though it's massive. Um, if I ever have the time, I would read it again because it's very good. Um, it reminds me kind of of Game of Thrones a little bit. To be fair, I did not read the Game of Thrones books, um, but I watched the whole show, and I know it kind of deviates a little bit, but it has a, a similar feel in the like complexity and politics and stuff like that. Um, and there are dragons. So, but it's very good, and I also wouldn't want the writer to feel like I'm comparing her to George R. R. Martin, because I don't believe that's the case, but... It's chunky, though. I like also it dives into, like, different chapters or... Jaden. 
in Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. This was such a unique book, and it's one of those books that like I just think about here and there because it was really good. Um, she's written a few books, and she wrote Mexican Gothic, which I also have, I think, on my shelf. Um, I didn't like it as much as this one, so I may not have kept it because I have limited space on my shelf, as you can see. Um, but The Gods of the uh, Jade and Shadow is so good. Um, it's unique in that it's set in Mexico during the Jazz Age, and it has to do with, like, the Mayan death god and, um, mystery, and it's so good. I have not read any book like it. Um, it's, it's super good. I highly recommend this one for sure. To be fair, I highly recommend all of these because these are all my favorites, so. But I just thought it was a really unique setting, like the Jazz Age in Mexico. It's just, I don't know, it's really cool. And I really like the main character. Uh, she was very, um, a cool character. Sometimes I get annoyed by the main character. Um, oh, how do I say this? Um, women main characters, I've talked about this before, are often written in the same way. Like, they're, like, feisty but, like, annoying because they're getting involved in stuff they shouldn't be. And, I don't know, it's just, like, um, it's a trope that I've complained about this before, so I'm not going to just keep complaining about it, but it just irks me. The thing is, they always put the main character in, like, a situation that's obviously going to go bad, and just it just stresses me out because I know she's, like, you know, can't deal with the situation effectively, so it just causes, like, problems further. And they're like, oh, sorry, I didn't know. And, I don't know, that just annoys me. I, um, I'll, I'll, I will say, like, to just further explain myself here, movies like The Hangover drive me insane. I can't watch them. I get anxiety watching movies like that because, like, when everything goes wrong, I get so stressed out. Oftentimes, I feel like the main characters, and they do this to women for whatever reason in these books, are always, like, just causing more problems than necessarily because they're, like, either, like, don't know what they're doing or, at least not yet, they don't know what they're doing yet, so, I don't know. That's just a trope I don't care for. Like, there's a difference between, like, bravery and stupidity, you know what I mean? Okay, next. <laughs> little tangent. Uh, Caraval. I would um, say that this is a young adult fantasy fiction. It's very, uh, well, it's not similar to Night Circus in the way that it's written at all, or the story, but um, it is like a magical carnival. So you have a magical circus and a magical carnival. Um, but it's also, it's like a game. And the contestants are trying to like figure out what's real and what's not and um if I remember correctly when you win you can have like any you get one wish and you get any wish granted so um it's set in a, a fictional world um but it's it's really good and it's uh this is a trilogy um and I just felt like it was really unique and I really I liked the way that stuff was described it's by Stephanie Garber, by the way. But yeah, this is this is a fun one, and I feel like the way that they describe the magic and um, the setting and all of the like items and people and outfits and stuff was just really fun. Um, I liked it. I feel like it was very unique, especially for a young adult novel, because usually I don't feel like they're very unique.
this is, this is fun because this one has like princesses, pirates, I think there's mermaids in it. Um, basically it's, it takes place in a fictional world um, where there's different kingdoms and all of them have like different magical creatures, um, which is cool. I like stuff like that. Um, but I really like this series. It's actually just a duology, so there's just two books in it. But I like this series because the main character on like this pirate's voyage and um, it goes to all these different places so you kind of get to like get an idea of all the different kingdoms and how they go together and also they all have I think they all have like a gemstone that like represents them which I love that um, I think I think they do I just can't remember um, but yeah it's good I, I thought it was very good once again This one is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. I also like anything that has to do with pirates. Love Pirates of the Caribbean, which I am going to Disney World tomorrow and I'm going to be there for a whole week and I am so excited. I can't wait to ride Pirates of the Caribbean like 8,000 times. I finally get to wear all my ears. Super excited about that.
was very unique. Um, it did very well. Um, or excuse me, it did blend horror and like fantasy fiction together very well. And it was a unique story.
seeing recommendations from you guys too. I feel like you now know pretty well what types of books I like to read, so I love, I've gotten some really good recommendations. I actually read a book recently um, that I'll talk about in my next uh, book video um, that was recommended by one of you guys, and it was really good. So, um, also, side note, if you didn't see, my Goodreads is in the description below, so um, feel free to add me on Goodreads if you want to, like, stay up to date on what I'm currently reading, um, which is obviously a little bit of a spoiler for the videos, but feel free to add me, so. Uh, anyways, I hope you're doing super, super good. Sweet dreams.